At some point, you're going to want to create your own game and not just start off of the game of somebody else. So I'm going to show you some ways that you can keep yourself organized and make sure your projects are easy to find and organized and all the things will work in the future. And if something does go wrong in the future, you can uh, figure out why and fix it. So the first thing I'm going to do before I create a new project is I am going to go to my Google Drive folder and I already have that open. So uh, let me just go to my home or my main folder here and I'm in Google Drive and I'm going to create a new folder. And I already have one, but I'll create a new one just for sake of demonstration. And this is where I'm going to put my game programming projects. And it actually might, if you wanted to, you could even say G develop projects because that's more specific. So I'm going to create that folder and here's my folder now. And I'm going to go inside that folder. I'm going to add another folder and I'm going to create a folder for this example. So I'll just say uh, tutorial number one. Uh, there we go. Or tutorial one. How's that? Keep it simple. And so uh, what this is, is a folder that I'm going to use to store the game that I create. And it's better to create it in advance. And uh, that way you have a place to put your project once you create it. So after I've created my place there where I want to uh, save all of my projects, and I've created a folder for the project I'm working on, I'm going to go back to G develop and I'm going to create a new project. And rather than starting with one of the pre-built ones, let's start with a completely empty game so you can see kind of how a game gets constructed. And so let's go to empty game. Notice that instantly I have the project menu opens up over here. And there's a couple of things I want to do before I go any further. The first thing is I'm going to save this. So I'm going to save as, I'm going to go to Google Drive, and I'm going to go find that folder that I just created. And there it is right there. So tutorial one. And this is why I created it in advance because it just makes it so much easier. I'm going to select the name of the folder where I'm going to save my project, select it. And I'm going to give this a name, and I'm just going to call this tutorial one. And that way it's in the right folder, it's at the right name. Uh, you just need to choose the name that matches the assignment you're working on. And so then I'm going to save that. And now I should have files inside of my projects folder. So if I go in here and go inside the tutorial, you can see there's the game file that's just been saved. So now let's go back to our game and we're going to open the project manager. And notice they give you a nice little button here if it can, in case you forget that it can be opened up here. Okay. And before you do anything else, you really need to add a scene. So you can't do anything without a scene. And so I'm going to click add a scene and I'm going to rename that scene. So I'm just going to say rename and I'll call this level one. And I just hit enter to change that name. And if I click on that, notice it opens up my level one. So I can, if I add more scenes, I can always go back to the project manager and choose the level that I want to work on. But once you have levels, you can just click on the name of the level and it will show it in the level editor. And notice it opens up two tabs, the level editor and then the events editor for that level. So at this point we have a game, but there's nothing to put on the screen. So we need to add something to the screen. So I'm going to add an object. So I'm going to come over here to the objects panel, add a new object, and notice they give you a whole bunch of cool assets that you can start out with. And so if I wanted uh, a specific kind of asset, notice there's this players, uh, there's different uh, packs that you can use. So like maybe I wanted to do the pirate pack and then I could um, 
look for ships or something like that, or if I wanted to do a, a, a platformer, um, there's a player section, and so there's different player icons, generic player icons. Uh, an industrial platformer pack. Okay, so there's just all these different things that you can add in. And I'm going to start by just creating my player. And in this case, my player will be a ship. And so I'll decide which ship I want to use. It doesn't really matter which one. And so I'm going to choose this one right here. And notice it, the license is public domain, which means that it's free to use this. You do not need to cite your source or anything like that. Although I'm sure Kenny would be very thankful if you did. So let's add this to the game and close out of that window now. And now you can see I have the red ship and I can drag the red ship onto the screen. You can see there's my red ship. And now uh, if I click on this little three dots here, I can say edit the object and I'll see what is actually here. So I'll see that there's uh, different images here based on the level of, of uh, damage to the ship kind of thing. And then if I go to behaviors, you can see that there are no behaviors added to the ship. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this. And I'm going to preview my game. And there's my ship. And notice nothing happens when I press keys because there are no behaviors assigned to this ship. This ship doesn't have any behaviors assigned to it. It doesn't have any code associated with it. And so it doesn't do anything. Okay, so let's go back. And um, I'm going to switch over to the events tab just so you can see there are no events coded in the game yet. And that's why it doesn't do anything. And we'll talk about that in a future video. So... Before I finish here, though, I'm going to go back to the project manager and just review uh, what I have here. I've created a scene. That scene, I added a ship. I can also go to the game settings here, and I can change the properties of the game. So like right now, the game doesn't have a name, so I'm going to call this the Tutorial 1 Game. And I can give it a version number if I wanted to. Uh, my name is Tim Helland. And um, I don't need to do any analytics or anything like that. So the rest of it is probably not necessary. But this top stuff up here, you should, probably should set that just so that it's the game name makes sense. And, uh, and you, people know who made it. So I'm going to apply. I'm going to save my game. And now the project should be saved. And let's check that it's working OK. So I'm going to close the game. And then I'm going to open a project from my Google Drive folder. Let's make sure it opens OK. There's that folder that I just created. That's the nice thing about creating folders, because the most recent one will usually show up here. And I'll go inside that folder, and there's the project, and so I'll select it, and voila, we're back to working on our game. So I strongly suggest that you always save, or, you know, start by creating a folder to put all your stuff, and then uh, save your game immediately. That way it's easy to keep saving it as you make progress so you don't lose your work. Oftentimes people wait to save until later and then their computer crashes or something and they lose all of their work. And I, that's not a good thing. So make sure you save frequently and make sure that you check that things are actually getting saved in there. So I'm going to go back to my Google Drive folder. And you can see that um, there's my game file right there. Okay, And... Um, it should be working and good to go. Until next time.